All right, now I'm going to cover one of the advanced topic in the streamlet. So this topic will help you in machine learning application design. When you need to design a machine learning application where high resource is needed and every time your application refresh, then it loads all those resource from the beginning. So in that case, what you will do? So in that case, you can store those data into a cache system. So it will load those data from the cache instead loading it from the scratch. So for that purpose, we will be using here. Let me just show you in readme file for section nine. So in section nine, we are going to, uh, it's not nine, in fact, it's a section 10. So in section 10, we will be using here cache data, cache resource and the session state. So these will help us to load our heavy resources in the runtime in a streamlet without loading it from the scratch. For example, you have a large machine system model. So it will take a lot of time to save that, a lot of time to load it. So just to store, just to save that time, we can use this cache system. Perfect. So here is our reference application. In this reference application, I'll be also showing you how these, the, these uh, refreshment happens in a streamlet. Whenever you type something, your streamlet application refreshment happens there. And that you can check with the increment counter. So as you refresh this, you change something in your model, the, the, I mean, as you change something in your file, this will refresh and the state will change internally. All right. So you see these counters are increasing. That means that many times this application is running internally. And if you don't apply these cache loadings, then uh, it will be loading these files from the scratch every time, then it will be taking a lot of time in that case. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our streamlit application. So I'm going to write here streamlit run 10 working with caching.py and then it is going to start and here it is going to refresh. Okay, let me just refresh this. So it says that working with caching and session state. It may take a while. Okay, perfect. So it has loaded here. Now, I'm going to show you how you can first load a very large file and then you notice that how much time it takes there. Okay, so I'm calling here, I'm reading, uh, I'm writing a function here, def read data and then df is equal to pd dot read csv and very large file I'm going to download from my repository. So you need to come here, all CSV ML data files. And in this, I'm going to load here, uh, probably this one, IMDB movie data. No, this is small file. Yeah, this one is large file. This is 63 megabyte. Okay, so I'm just going to get the link from here and then I paste it here. Thereafter, I'm going to return this data frame from here. I'm just going to return the head of this data frame. Okay. And also I'm going to import time here. And then I say that, then I actually call this read data. I, I'm going to load it into a data frame DF. So I call here DF is equal to read data. But before that, I say that start is equal to time dot time. And thereafter, I say here that st dot write, it took total time, time dot time minus start. So this is the total time it took if we are using it without any cache. So yeah. It took 4.7 second to read this CSV file. Okay, let's go ahead and put a button here and then you see that. So I write here st dot button 
and here I see that refresh it oops this time it took around 3 seconds again it took around 4 seconds then again I am refreshing it it is taking 3 to 4 seconds every time so what happened when you refresh it run it multiple times so every time it's going to take a lot of time it is unnecessary you don't need to load this data every time from the source so for that purpose you can simply put here a decorator st dot cache data so you put here st dot cache data so as soon as you put it streamlit now knows that it need to cache the data what is being returned by this function now if you refresh it it's going to take just a few millisecond all right so just within a millisecond this whole data read has happened and now it has become super fast so that is the use of this cache data now let's see how internally this happened with the session state okay so how this happens with the session state like we had seen in our uh, you know the sample application so every time you refresh your application so in session that uh, state get changed automatically although this is not needed as of now in your uh, application but just for your understanding I'm writing it here update session uh, state so this is function which is going to update the session state okay so I write here if so I'm going to put a variable counter inside the session state so I say that if counter not in st dot session state then in that case I'm going to put st dot session state dot counter is equal to zero so basically if counter variable is not set in the session state then set it zero otherwise you you write counter value so I write here counter is equal to st dot session state dot counter and every time this update session state is called I'm going to update the counter value so I write here is equal to plus one it's like this only perfect now you call your update session state every time here when your refreshment happens then this counter will be printed there now you just make some change here now whatever the change you make here you see I'm not refreshing it even so every time the session update is happening so basically that means that whenever you will make any change in your file every time it is going to load this but we have provided here cache data that means it is going to load this data from the cache so it will not read it from the source this is one part now let's see let, let, let's see if you have uh, NLP model machine learning models then how would you load that so for loading machine learning models you need cache resource there so cache data does not work in machine learning models you need their resource where you need to load as a resource there okay so I'm just going to write a function here def load model let's say you have a 10 billion parameter model a huge model and that model takes around 10 to 20 seconds to load in that case it would be really very difficult so I write here model is equal to pipeline just let me show you here that so I had imported transformers I, I mean I imported pipeline from the transformers if you don't have transformers you can simply do here pip install transformers if you are machine learning engineer I'm sure you must be aware with the transformers the transformers from the hugging phase okay so from the pipeline you can do like model is equal to pipeline and then you write here sentiment analysis okay so you load a model sentiment analysis model and then you say that st dot success 
loaded NLP model in function. Then you return your model. Let's load this model. Then you say that st dot success and here you see that got the model perfect now see what happens here it says that loaded NLP model and got the model so success is here and here it's not taking much of the time that you can check here just check that how much time it is taking to load it although this is very small model so it shouldn't take much time so you write here start is equal to time dot time and then you just print it here. So it takes around how much 700 to 800 millisecond uh, it's taking to load this model. You can say roughly one second it is taking to load the model. Let's go ahead and utilize here cache resource. So I write here st dot cache resource. So now it is going to cache this resource. Alright, so this time it's taking how much of time? Around 700, 800 seconds. But now thereafter, if you are running it, after the second time, it is taking how much time? Around, around 2 milliseconds probably. Yeah. So now you see the beauty of this caching system in a streamlet. Whenever you have a very large file and uh, you want to load it into your system then you can use the streamlit caching system like you can use the cache resource and then you can use the cache data so these things can be used properly all right perfect so this is all about in this lesson thanks a lot for watching this i'll see you in next one